Für euch nochmal auf die Bühne hier, Mr. Mike and Neely. First time I heard his music, I was I think I was maybe eight years old, and uh, it was uh, 1970, 1970 I guess, and and he was on a, a, t a TV program called the Dick Cavett Show, and it was the Flo and Eddie band, and uh, it might have been 71 actually, so I, I could have been nine years. I guess I was 70, I was nine years old, 1971, and uh, they played the song Sofa, and I had seen pictures of Frank. There was a poster of Frank at the record store that I used to like to go to when I was a kid, and he scared me the way he looked. So my first, my f initial reaction to Frank was was fear. Uh, that was before I ever heard him. And then I, I, I saw, oh my God, Frank Zappa and the Mothers of Invention are going to be on the Dick Cavett Show tonight. So I, I got permission from my parents to stay up past my bedtime because it was like 11:30 at night, and uh, and they came on and they were just like all oh, so ugly and scary looking you know it's like oh my god what are they gonna play it's gonna be the most terrifying sound and then they played this they played sofa this beautiful melodic waltz and that had a incredible again it's like a seismic impact on me the fact that first of all I learned right then not to judge a book by its cover that, that just because I thought that these freaky scary looking people were going to play freaky scary music wasn't necessarily the case of course Later on, I got more into Frank and realized that he did do some freaky, scary stuff. But it's very interesting in retrospect that he chose to play Sofa on that show and not something weirder because it had like a huge impact on me. So that was number one. But the thing that really, that really got under my skin was a few months later when the kid who lived across the street said, you need to hear this record. It's really weird and you're going to love it. And it was Help by Maroc. And so he played me Help on Maroc, and that was really like the, the bomb going off for me. And I immediately traded him other albums so that I could get his copy of Freak Out. And, um, and I played it all the time. I became obsessive about Frank. And then, I was nine, and then when I was 10 years old, I heard We're Only In It For The Money for the first time. And that was, I think, really, that like, gave me a glimpse of possibities of, in sound. Like I, 
there's stuff on that album that is just so incredible and so creative and doesn't sound like anything else and, and I realized that's what I want to do I want to make sounds that no one else has made and by the way I would also love to work with this guy Frank Zappa because I think he's like the coolest guy in the world so I became obsessed with Frank got posters put them up on my wall the whole time I was a teenager I was just like freaked out about Frank all the time every time there was a new Zappa record it was the greatest thing in the world I was happy for months and then uh you know, so and then I was teaching myself how to play his music for a good time. I just, I didn't I didn't think I would ever even get to meet him, much less play with him. But I was learning how to play his songs on guitar and keyboard, just for the for the practice and the experience. And then you know, years later, when I had the opportunity to audition for him, it was like all those years of just playing his music for personal reasons ended up that I was preparing for this job without even realizing it, and everything just fell into place. Guys, also jetzt kommt mal der Hammer, der, ähm, naja, einfach der Hammer, Mike Keneally and Friends. Put down your beers, guys. Jimmy, Eugene, come on up. The music is about to get really awesome. I just wanted to tell you guys, wer hier übernachten will, es gibt noch Frühstück morgen. Es gibt auch mal eine, ja, es gibt auch mal eine Dusche, die versprochen ist, dass bis 9 Uhr funktioniert, falls irgendwer duscht, aber wer tut das? Also, showers will be working until 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. There will also be breakfast, but the most important part is to tune up your ears and your head, that's right, for Mike Keneally and friends who are now going to, how do you say this in the Californian English, uh, kick your ass. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jim.
Thank you so much. Please welcome Jan Vestman on bass guitar. Hi, just wanted to say I'm very glad to be here. Thank you. Am I feeding back? Yeah, Jan's voice, because he's such a powerful presence, is uh, <laughs> setting off the low end rumble to a nasty demon degree. Say some more magic, Jan. Magic, more magic. It's still there. Yeah. Boom. I will be, be that using far away. my voice in the high register. Yeah, but yeah, if you're that far away from the mic, it'll run. Yeah. yeah. Schroeder, can you hear everything over there? I'm fine. Can you hear everything okay out there? Yeah. We're, going to, we're going to play a bunch of my songs. We're going to play a bunch of Frank Zapper songs, too. Um, I... I, hadn't, I didn't prepare anything to say about Frank, but I would feel silly if I didn't say anything because, um, you know, he's the reason we're here. We know that. And he's uh, amazing. And he meant a lot to all of us. And uh, I'd be a whole lot different if it weren't for him. My childhood would have been a whole lot less fun and interesting. And uh, Frank Zappa, man. <laughs> So here's an attempt at playing a song. <laughs> What will you 
you. You could do your laundry and cook for you. Maybe you should stay with your mama. Mama. You're really kind of stupid and ugly too. And, and you, you should never smoke in pajamas. pajamas. You, you must ought to fire and burn your face. face. Maybe you'll return, return to Managua. You could go unnoticed in such a place. place. You ain't really made for being out in the street. There ain't much hope for a fool like you. Cause if you play the game, you will get. Thank you very much. Mike Willis on the beautiful background vocals rocking. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I'm going to jump up to the camera just for you to come this one. Indeed, indeed. I'm just a sitting here, man. Thank Do I remember Zappanali? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> Is there something in your mind you can tell me what Well, I just, I, it was, it was a, a huge amount of fun, you know? It, it, was, it was tremendously enjoyable. I, 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 did, I played with these guys. I played with, with Schroeder and, and Jan, and we, uh, you know, we enjoyed being on that stage and playing for that audience. They were a beautiful audience, and, and, uh, and we had a great time. Everybody was really cool to us. Playing with Frank was like a uh, was analogous to uh, the Big Bang that created the universe. <laughs> it was a huge explosion, and the uh, and the repercussions of that continue to have impact on on my life and really everything I do musically. Um, and in in a, in a very uh, sort of uh, practical sense, uh, that was the. I mean, I love Frank very very much, and and when I when I got that job, it was almost unbelievable because he was the absolute top of the line for me when I was growing up is, is Frank Zappa and Frank Zappa's music. It was, I idolized him. So, and that was my first professional musical gig was playing in his band. So to start a career there at the absolute epitome of what I thought musical achievement could possibly be was mind blowing and, and also a, a bit unsettling because when that ended it's like what do I do now you know I, I, I achieved everything that I hope to achieve by the age of 26 so now what so I, I, it took a while to figure it out uh, and the, the, the most important thing is is to do my own music and to sort of like pay honor to what he meant to me not to just play Zappa songs but to honor his spirit of creativity and productivity and just sort of like non-stop uh, uh, exploration of, of music.
is so pounded and pulped against the wall. It's got me clutching my chest in the hall. It's got me wanting nothing at all. Oh boy, I think this is it this time. I don't want to know I'm reaching and stretching and waiting to go and stealing a look out my hotel window oh boy I think this is it this time My shit together. My skull starts to bubble again. And every time I think I got my shit together, my skull starts to bubble again. Hey, Gabriel, can you get out here and fuck shit up? Gabriel Shalom. I hear you've been having trouble with pigs and ponies. <laughs>
Well, she thought he was a man, but she was a muffin. Gabriel Shalom on fucking shit up. Okay, listen. We had a much longer set prepared, but maybe um, concision is the essence of something. So uh, I, I think that there are a bunch of other people that want to play, and I really want to do the jam. I want to play with Chadbourne. I want the Paul Green kids to get up. I want uh, some, of the, some more of the guys from, uh, from the Joe's Garage shit to get up. I want more people to get up and play. So fuck it, man. I, I don't want to hear on. about no jam, OK? Yo, let's have a jam. Let's, Mike, Mike, let's just call him up. Is that all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys, also the musiker, die mitspielen wollen jetzt auf der Bühne. Es muss ja um Punkt 10 leider Schluss sein, dass Kim Pinsky habe sich beklagt. Aber, you guys, yeah, 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 we want to be back next year. The musicians who want to jam with Mike, Jan, Schröder. Can we Gabriel, get Chadborn up Ike. here? Where's Chadborn, man? Where's Chadborn? Jimmy, come on up. It's time to play. Jimmy and Chadborn. Paul, you want to bring your guys? <laughs> 